Hey, what's going on out there? Justice Severin back again here from the original chapters. Today we're doing a part two on a piece I did a, a while back, but it was so impactful that I wanted to give you guys another round two to really deep dive here. Where today we're really continuing that conversation around sales talk, right? The bread and butter, and once again, how it's forever evolving, but always remaining the same, right? We're talking about the same grind, but different aspects here, right? And really diving into kind of new platforms and even how we can just take your business that much further here to progress you to that next level okay so go ahead hit that subscribe button if you're new here to make sure we get you plugged into all our future videos this was a live i did straight out of my original chapters marketing group over on facebook i want to make sure we get you straight to the source here so let's go ahead and get you moving no so like we said here sales talk right forever evolving oh i'm telling you there's just such a broad topic and category in general so really today i just want to kind of dive into that how it's remained exactly the same but at the end of the day new platforms same grind really so many principles can be tied down and really just taken advantage across wherever it is you're leveraging these sales once again you know we specialize on facebook a lot here so whether it's facebook youtube TikTok, whatever it may be at the end of the day there has to be these kind of core values with it and core tactics i would say on top of it as well here so like i said if you guys are here watching this live drop that watching the replay drop a hashtag replay or hashtag i saw this later whatever you want to put for that i don't really care um a little quick housekeeping last time we talked about what i did a little free 20 minute training on how to extract money from your audience so that was really kind of leveraging the money inside your audience there really went deep on you know in depth on traffic and how the heck we can get it for free 99 i called it there went over um, overall branding, audience of buyers and how to build them, awareness of handling leads, kind of like the art of not blowing it, uh, persistence and accountability, and really how to get success with the above when you use those two, right? So I wanted to go ahead and make sure you guys have an idea there. Um, I can't even believe it too. The group's almost at 700 people. Like, so <laughs> thank you guys so much for being a part of this here. I, I seriously love it. So let's just keep this thing going. Make sure you, we keep jamming this thing packed with value. Um, and as you guys know too, make sure to keep commenting on future posts. Um, it always helps me to kind of give some another, whatever topics we're going to talk about. Even I think Robin's here. She even gave some ideas on kind of sales messenger a little bit. So even that helps inspire stuff like this. So always feel free to drop comments on those types of posts and we'll keep that thing rocking. So like I said, today we're really discussing forever evolving world of sales, right? That really, like I said, at the end of the day, it's changing, but it's staying the same. All right, and so I'll try and answer any questions too as they pop up. Um, at the end, I'll definitely feel free to answer any other questions too to really dive in if anyone has anything especially there. Um, like I said, hit that like button, especially if you're getting some good news out of this while we're going. Feel free to drop that love button there, seriously. All right, so sales overview. Sales abroad, you know, why the struggle with sales, right? Why, why are the sales struggling right now? Uh, leveraging the free FB funnel, that free Facebook funnel, organic. That's a lot of what we kind of specialize here, so no one how to really utilize this thing and get the most out of it. Pre-framing, talking about what you do before matters, right? This is a piece here that I think a lot of people sleep on and especially myself early on, so I wanna talk about that. Uh, your offer and messenger sales conversations. Like, it, it can't happen without that, right? So I, I have to put that there too. So a little quick high level, let's dive in here now. So I put the number one here, right? So why, why the number one? Why? Because all the time I hear from people, oh, you know what? Ugh, I'm struggling with sales, right? It's like when you hear someone say that, well, let's start getting deeper about why we're struggling with sales. Because I'll tell you right now, it's never one thing, right? It's never like, ah, oh, you know, I said one thing to a prospect. I think that threw them off. I, I mean, maybe if it's early enough in the conversation, you say something bad, that can mess it up. But at the end of the day, it's rarely, and even that case, now, now let me step back. Even saying that, that's not even true. Because it always goes deeper than that. Once you, you can't piss someone off with saying one thing bad, but realistically it should go deeper than that. And obviously we're not trying to piss people off here. We're trying to help people out, help others. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to, come on now, there's more than one thing here that's really forcing this thing to go. That's really being the reason as to why something isn't clicking or something is clicking. All right, so we gotta really analyze all this all around here. So let's get more specific and stop thinking um, like this thing is just so narrow. Right. This is the this is a broad spectrum here across the sales and how we start to execute. So really keep that why in mind. Right. Keep think of start to finish. What is happening in your process? 
and really analyze, and especially when you kind of, I'm big on having sales processes in general, as we'll talk about, but when you have a process, it starts to allow you to kind of pick the kinks from the machine, right? It's like you can find out what point you're messing up at or losing people at in your sales process. And now as you fix those, it's gonna help you to consistently get past that and then maybe get to your next hurdle. And then once again, now you kind of keep on going down that path there, it's gonna make it that much easier for you, right? It's just, it's never just one reason, all right? We need to start getting past that there. It's not like you have an issue with sales. You have an issue with more than that. It's deeper than that. We need to start to think about how the whole chain is connected and how we can really get that. So true rapport, and it's also a big piece here to making the sales. Like when I think a true rapport, I'm really talking about being an authority, showing that you're an expert, and showing that you're enthusiastic. I think that from these three things alone, people always are talking about, you know, create rapport by just, you know, having a conversation, being a little kickback with them, you know, talking about the weather, whatever it may be. These things can generate rapport, don't get me wrong, but it's more so how it continues throughout and how it really, like the people who want to buy from you, you have to show that you're an authority, right? You got to show that you're, whether or not you're a true expert, right? Who, who here's an expert in, anyways, right? Come on. Like no one here knows everything. At the end of the day, just show that you're someone who can help them. That's what's going to build the rapport that much more. At the end of the day, just because someone likes you, I had people when I was first buying my first high ticket program, I don't, you know, other affiliates trying to pitch it to me, but the person I ended up buying from was the person who I genuinely felt could help me the most. And that's what that true rapport really stands for right there, right? So sales process and tactics, right? Understanding, like, like I was kind of saying there, where your chain starts from, as we're gonna talk about that kind of FB funnel here in a sec, but really following through, knowing where your sales process begins, where you where you were initially maybe speaking with a prospect, whether you're playing the long game or the short game, and knowing how to use your quote unquote, we'll say tactics, not to sound manipulative, but at the end of the day, you know, we're talking to a lot of prospects here. So we have to have some kind of process so that we can follow and now use tactics efficiently that are gonna get us to really complete complete our goal here. Right? Even I did a live, I think in the last week or two weeks ago on really having a guiding principle. And when you're just having these tactics that are kind of going blindly, it's gonna really make things suffer. Because at the end of the day, it's not tied to anything at its core there, right? So you got your sales process, your tactics, we really have to focus on growing that audience of buyers here, right? And from there, really process on, of converting. I think it's just on of converting here. We gotta make sure now, once we start to get these audience, these buyers into our audience, we have some kind of a process on how to convert them. Because at the end of the day, you can have a, you know, a pretty looking Facebook, your Facebook page, it's optimized, it's branded, and maybe, maybe that's it for you, right? <laughs> and now you're just hoping people are gonna come to you. So like at the end of the day, that hope marketing doesn't work and it doesn't last. That's that's for dang sure. Definitely doesn't last and it doesn't get consistent results. So we have to make sure we have a process of it. Really, where we're starting off, if you ask me, starting off on building that audience. Well, of course, we have to be optimized with our profile, making sure that our branding is on point so that we can up our chances. You're gonna see a lot of this is about percentage. Like no one, no one you know or you will ever know has a 100% closing rate on all this. It's like you just have to, what you gotta do is do what you can to increase that percentage. So that now, every time a lead comes through this sales process, it's gonna up your chances, right? There's just that much better of a chance. And if you're lacking in certain things, you're, you're dropping that percentage, right? So let's sharpen it up here. So building an audience of buyers, really coming after that brain that we build up, how to really get those leads, captivate them, right? Get them into our world. And ideally, if you ask me, into our messenger. And now at that point, bringing them through. So really, once again, we're just taking them it's a straightforward process if you ask me. It's not rocket science, it's not 50 steps. It's just knowing about how to really have, like I said, your branding on point, your audience, you're growing your audience efficiently. You know, you're not just adding junk, random people into your audience here, or else they're never gonna buy, right? That's why I say audience of buyers and bringing them in through making sure that you're bringing them with your content and that your messenger is on point here so you can bring them through, right? That's why I kind of say, who are you spending time with, right? Who are you speaking to? I talk all the time, or really it's like, I think people underestimate, and hopefully a lot of you here don't, so people are underestimating who they're actually getting into with their audience. You know, when you're using things like an, you know, an automatic friend adder, or just things like that for example, I'm not saying they're terrible, but really now, you gotta make sure that these groups of people you're getting them from, maybe the ads you're looking at, the Facebook pages you're looking at, you have to make sure that these people are actually someone who's gonna willingly raise their hand and say, I'm interested in what you got. And how do we know that? By making sure that they're targeted, right? Making sure that we find them from a specific place where if you ask me, 
it's a buyer spot, right? It's some place where they've at least raised their hands. Because if they spent a dollar on something, you know, even a dollar on something, that means they've taken out their wallet at least one time. And there's a damn near good chance they're going to take it out again, right? So let's put ourselves in a position where we can help them with that next piece there, right? Maybe that last dollar they spent or hundred dollars or thousand dollars they spent wasn't so great. Maybe you can be that person to provide them with something awesome next time, right? So that's kind of what we're talking about there with the qualified leads versus non-qualified leads. Qualified leads are the buyers and the ones who are interested actually in what you got. And how do we know that? From where we're getting them from, right? Knowing actually where they're coming from here. That That's one of the best ways to really know. And once again, you can never get this 100%, but at least if this is the majority of your audience that you're building, then the majority of people that you're talking to are gonna fit that fold, right? So that's gonna make it that much easier there, right? It, it affects the sale drastically. Cause if you're talking to a bunch of people who don't fit this bucket that you're interested in, right? Maybe you're interested in promoting affiliate marketing niche. Maybe you're interested in promoting something around fitness, right? And you're just adding a bunch of people who are not interested in any of this stuff. You're gonna of course have a terrible chance of closing people. You have to talk to so many people. It's gonna burn you out because none of them are even close. You're gonna find someone who's somewhat interested and then you're just gonna, it's not gonna work out. And then you'll be like, oh, well I gotta go through with another 500 people to hopefully get lucky again. So narrow that in, narrow that in, it's gonna make a huge difference. And as we said here, really the messenger in the sales conversations. I think at the end of the day, this thing is huge. Like you have to make sure that you get people into this, into your messenger, whether even if it's, you know, I like just, I don't know about YouTube, but like TikTok, it, I promote mainly on Facebook and email marketing. At the end of the day, my goal is to create a conversation out of that. Even when it comes to email marketing, a lot of times people just think it's a one-way conversation. The best email marketers out there are really getting this two-way conversation going, right? They're getting people to reply to their emails, trying to get a conversation started, so then you can get dive into it deeper inside a messenger and really qualify and get into there, right? It's gonna make life that much better. And then I talk about here kind of importance of momentum in your first sale. So once again, all these ones, as you can see the connection here, we talk about why are we struggling with sales? Once again, it's deeper than what we're thinking here, right? So the importance of momentum, this last bit here, is really, I think that if you ask me, if you haven't done your first sale, if you have done your first sale, maybe you know, kind of know the feeling of what it's like to leverage that. And when you can leverage a sale, like that's where the momentum really takes off. But what I always try to teach and preach to any of my students or anything like that is really push and push to get that first sale. Because once you do, you can start leveraging your content and it doesn't have to be a sale result. Really, it just has to be a result, period. Maybe you got it like, you know, a student might just got like three leads into a system where you can potentially get thousand dollar sales after it. It's like, these are you, these are results either way. And you can now start to leverage these in your content and it's going to help that much more. And we start talking about pre-framing that's going to really see how that can just do work for dividends for you seriously there. So now we got here leads, prospect customers, right? So in this, in this situation here, I want to make sure too, if we got any questions I can answer, um, Oh, good. Hey, no, I'm glad to have you here. June, great to see you here. Robin, great to see you here too. Uh, so let's kind of keep diving in here. So as you can see, we've got our Facebook funnel, right? Leads, prospects, customers, money down below. I, that, Like I said, to me, this whole Facebook funnel, Facebook organic, it's not rocket science. Of course, I'm not going to say like this thing is easy because if, if that was the case, everyone would be doing it or everyone would be successful at it. So realistically though, it's simple. It's making sure that everything is really dialed in as we just saw above, right? It's like there's only so many steps to making sure that they're all in depth. You know what you're doing here, right? And it's just going to help increase those percentages, right? So once again, this I want to talk about this free FB funnel organic side, like a lot of us leverage here. And if you're not, I highly encourage it, especially in the beginning. So traffic types, right? Warm leads versus cold leads, right? So let's talk about cold leads here for a sec, right? So cold leads. Here's one thing where I always say, don't knock the cold leads. I think a lot of people are always talking about how uh, like just get your content right and you're gonna bring warm leads into your business and then it, you're gonna kill it. it like it's gonna be just fine you're gonna be awesome right it's like if that's all you're relying on it's gonna be tough to really bring in consistent leads here so that's why if you ask me to have some having a process of bringing in cold leads into your business on a daily basis and if not a deal I'm not saying ask me seven days a week right I like to not work on the weekends so maybe if it's Monday to Friday I'm trying to work in my business I'm trying to bring cold leads into my business every day, right? Because if we're building an audience, it doesn't mean that they have to all be raising their hands at the content we're putting out there. We know that, that we're building an audience that's sharp and that's actually interested in what we got. So now we can stay proactive and try and pull them out, right? And try and bring these people into our ecosystem and get that thing going. And that's going to be, that's why I say stay proactive there. Because once again, like I said with 
the whole sales bit, momentum, getting your first sale. If I, I was just talking to someone even earlier today and they were kind of talking about how, you know, they're, they're kind of shy about their content. They're feeling like, you know, X, Y, Z. And I'm saying, all right, well, like, is that all you're kind of doing is just putting out content, waiting for someone to raise their hand? And like, yeah, like I'm talking to people from it. And to me, it's like, look, that's amazing. <laughs> if you're putting content out and you're getting conversations starting, that's freaking incredible. But like, how can we now multiply that? That's That system's already moving. Get the cold side to it. And now you're going to be able to, if you ask me double, if not triple, quadruple, cold leads is so much, warm leads is nothing better, right? If you ask me. But at the end of the day, cold leads creates opportunities that you can then turn them into warm leads. So that's why I really like to stress that there. A lot of people knock on the kind of cold leads thing here, but you have to be proactive with that. Don't listen to the gurus there. That's why I say that there. Content is great, but let's think about this here, right? If you think of the, what, Russell Brunson's and all these guys, they put out ads and their ads crush it. But why do their ads crush it? Because everybody knows who the heck they are, right? If you and I put out the same ad or just as quality of an ad that Russell Brunson puts out or any of these top dogs, right? Blake Neubauer or whoever, it's not going to perform as well because they have the pull. They, If someone sees them, they have testimonials on testimonials on testimonials, right? So let's, once again, let's do what we can to not, not play the odds in our favor here. You know, so now with that being said, right, it sounds like I'm hating on warm leads a little bit, but warm leads, these are also extremely powerful. Like I said, if you were able to get some warm leads here, just like I was talking personally earlier today, that's fantastic, right? So once again, these leads are going to be great because you can get them in through content and really I kind of say here where they're best with results. And when I say results, of course, the obvious result is sales, right? But even at a deeper pace, if you're getting leads into your business on a consistent basis, if you were maybe you've built up your email funnel, you've, you've built up your email list, you've, you're doing things that are moving the needle forward in your business. This is gonna help out that much more when you put this in your content and bringing people in. I think that's also the tougher part if you ask me with kind of bringing in warm leads when you're just starting off and that's like what you're solely relying on. If you don't have as many results, people aren't gonna believe that your content is gonna be able to help them as much. I, I'm not, I don't make the rules here. If you ask me, that's just how I see it. And if that's how I see it, I'm not alone there. So at the end of the day, just keep that in mind. And I could even show you, I'm not going to show it to you now, but you can see some of my posts where I'd be able to, if I show some kind of result on it, it's a much better chance of getting someone to really resonate and want to raise their hand and pull them out of the audience there right now. But at, at the end of the day, don't let this stop you from putting out content because you need that. That's all about the branding. It's all about giving the value. At the end of the day, if you stop putting out content, you're going to be shooting yourself in your foot because now even with the cold leads there, they're not going to believe you. They're going to see you have a page there. It's just blank. It's just got maybe you got a pretty looking you know, profile picture, cover photo, um, but after that you got nothing. So you got to make sure you're keeping that consistent content there. Um, warmer leads, like I said, they're hotter leads in general and they're primed for the sale. All right. So that's like I said, it's really you're able to pull people out. They're resonating with you. They're saying, hey, I need help. Because once again, a lot of people are just afraid to ask for help. So whether that's true or not, if these people are raising their hands, they're clearly are vibing with you. You're able to take advantage of that once again if you compare that to a cold lead, right? Someone who doesn't really know you, now it's gonna be that much harder to kind of win them over. The warm leads, we can start to get a little more direct, right? And that, we'll talk about that later on as well here. And also with the warm leads too, understand that you have a you're building an audience here, right? Now this audience, if you're I mean, if you're like me, you're not deleting people out of your Facebook friends list every day. I I really try to refrain from that too much, honestly. In the very beginning I was doing that, but if you ask me, People are sitting in your audience and whether they're liking your stuff or not, a lot of the times they're seeing what you got. So by you sticking around, being being consistent with your content, once again, maybe people aren't liking it and you're pulling them out there with your call to actions right away, but down the line, you never know what's gonna happen, right? So long-term audience members can really be strong, warm leads down the line. They say, you know what? You know what, Justice? I've been watching your stuff for like the past three months. It looks great, man. Like I'm actually a little, I'm a little interested. What do you, what do you want to talk about? Right? Not what do you want to talk about? What do you got going on over there? Let me hear some more. And now that's a lot more of a straightforward conversation as opposed to a cold lead. Something I'm just introducing myself to and trying to open up, which once again, both are possible, but these warm leads, though they're, though they'll be fewer, if you ask me, they are still very, very strong leads. So always want to try and leverage them if you can. Um, let me, let me just see real quick. if We got any other questions that popped up here. Okay, good, good. So now let's keep going here, right? So <laughs> this, this situation, right? What, what do we have here? I'm seeing a little kid drawn, right? I'm seeing a little kid drawn here. Now, wh why do I put this here? Because at the end of the day, I think that a lot of people, including like I said to myself at the beginning here, are not realizing the importance of pre-framing. 
not realizing the importance. And I've already, as you can see, I've already basically touched on this throughout this this live right here. Because at the end of the day, this pre-framing is crucial. For me, like just to even go quickly on it, I, my first one, my first, first month I ever got a high ticket sale, that next like 30 to 35, 40 days, I went without getting a high ticket sale for that long. And really the reason I found out, I felt like even more so that I wasn't able to get that high ticket was because before people were getting on the call with me and I, I was networking, talking to others and I kind of, I didn't come to this realization myself. Uh, at the time I was talking to others and someone had mentioned to me, they said, you know, when I'm closing, they were talking about how they have a great closing room when they're getting the phones, whatever the case may be. And I was getting on a lot of phone calls, right? I was doing like 10 to 15 calls a week, failing to get a sale, right? I'm like, I've made one. Let me just stay consistent. I can keep this thing going, right? But I was talking to them and they were saying, you know, the thing is with me, before I even get in the call, the picture's painted, right? They understand that much more that, that, that I am someone who can help them. That's what the person was saying to me. They realize, you know what? I'm an authority and I'm actually someone who can truly help you. I've displayed that I've helped other people X, Y, Z. So now by the time they get on the phone call or they make the offer, it's just that much more of a natural process. It's almost like they're expecting it, right? They're expecting it and they're happy to work with them because they want to work with them. And that's all about pre-framing and positioning right there. So that's what the baby's drawing there. We gotta draw and paint that perfect picture, right? So how do we start doing that? You know, what you do ahead of time matters. So at the very bare bones, I would say this is where I felt like I at least had this pre-framing down um, during that kind of time when things were when things were struggling that much more. Content and branding, right? Just make sure that you're staying consistent with your content, making sure, and while you're doing that, your branding is gonna actually make sure that it's still doing great here, right? So now with that being said, staying relevant, right? Consistent in people's faces, right? When you're doing this now, that that's what the content's all about here. Really making sure that you're staying consistent with it and it's gonna keep people there. And like I mentioned, that kind of long game, I think people, it, you know, let me go back so I don't jump the gun here. Um, a lot of people sleep on the fact, you know, the turnover in this industry is so high, right? People come in today, two months from now, they're gone. Realistically, if you keep going where you're at right now and you stick around for the next four months, five months, six months, two, three months, it's almost a guarantee that you're going to run to people who maybe even talked to a while ago. You planted that seed, as I even put here. And now, two months later, three months later, six months later, they've been following you, they've been seeing you're still around, and they wanna work with you because they gelled with you more than they did with somebody else. That, that's something where I tell, even, like I said, I say it to a lot of people too, where at the end of the day, some people are just going to like you more than me. Some people are gonna like Sarah more than like Justice. Some people are gonna like Justice more than like Sarah. We can't really control too much of that, but at the end of the day, take advantage of that. That's somebody out there may like you, they just might not be in the right mindset, in the right position, maybe financially, whatever the case is. So just make sure that you're planting that seed, right? You're painting the larger than life picture. I think that is so big there, you know? Realistically, we want them to, once they once they start talking to us, realize, hey, you know what? Like this person seems like they can definitely help me. Like all I've really seen is their content, I'm seeing their results and I'm seeing um, the way that they're conducting themselves, whatever it may be, right? And I think that that's someone who could definitely help me, right? So. Whether they buy it today or not, that seed, you're starting to plant that seed. And this is, this is all stuff that's going to help you when it comes down to that close right there, right? So once again, testimonials can help with this. Results obviously can help with this. Um, true rapport, you know, we'll talk about this later too in Messenger. I think a place that people sleep on in Messenger, and I'm going to call this like a, a little pro tip here. It's like, realistically, I, I don't even want to go too deep because I'm going to go deep on it later, but really building that expertise rapport there. And not just, not just having conversations to have conversations, but like being genuine there. I think maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Just being truly genuine on top of showing that you're someone who can actually help them. Like that is going to help you so much further than you think in the long run. That is, I planted so many seeds that way and that I'd be able to reap down the line. So I want to really hammer on that there. You know, VSLs, video sales letters there. Being able to send these things maybe before you make your offer. It's like, when once you make your offer, not to say you've, you've kind of pulled the trick, the rabbit out of the hat, right? So what we can, whatever we can do before you pull the rabbit out of the hat to improve your chances are going to be that much better, right? So these are all tips you can kind of do to help that out, right? These are going to drastically, incre drastically increases your closing rate, your closing percentage here. And especially if you're someone, I mean, like me, I love getting on the phone. You know, even if you're in messenger, once again, if you're in messenger, you can kind of be, you can have a lower closing rate, I'd say, because at least you're being quick about it. But especially if you're someone who's spending the time to get on the phone with people, 
this is going to drastically increase your closing rate if you're able to plant these seeds and pre-frame before you get them on the phone call and once again it's the same for messenger either way it's going to drastically increase in the messenger as well if you're able to now pre-frame this paint that larger than life picture just think about that right and how are you going to do that especially in the beginning your content your branding but once again that next level of how you're delivering value right and if you're doing this consistently enough results are guaranteed whether it's a sale or not you can still go out go about and leverage these results right put them out there one way or another they need to believe you're someone who can truly help them at the end of the day that's that's period and that's kind of what i'm talking about there with that true rapport doesn't matter if you it's one thing if you gel with the person you got a good energy with them right but if they don't think that you're really good at what you do or maybe think you're good at what you do but they don't think that you're an expert someone who can like truly help them out truly change their business so that they can start reaching some goals start crushing it right that's what they're trying to get to we're all getting into this to really take our business next level if they think you're somebody who can kind of help them that's not going to be enough come on we, even when i say it all out i'm sure that you can completely resonate with that that's not going to be enough there you really need to believe that you need to get them to believe that you are someone who can truly help them and so there's many ways of doing that and pre-framing is just one way to truly help them help that out so now we got this next tier, right? We're talking about, <laughs> you see this guy serving, right? Serving dishes, ready to go, right? He's out here trying to hook people up, give them some good stuff, give them some good food, make sure make sure that they're all set, make sure they're taken care of, right? So what am I relating this to? What am I saying here? Really, I'm talking about how to craft a killer offer, right? What is that guy offering? What are we really offering to separate ourselves from the crowd here, right? And, and if you're like me, I don't usually give away my offer in my content too much unless i'm doing some kind of a launch um i more so like to keep my offer um packaged up where you gotta talk to me if you want to come get it type of thing that, like that's it makes it much more exclusive like and that that's where i can unleash the killer offer there that's kind of like the the thing there too if you're giving your offer too soon or you're just you're offering something to someone pitching someone too early um sometimes now they kind of know what you got and now it's tough to come back from that if you ask me it's like really you want to craft that killer offer and have it so that when they bring it to you in the times right you can unload it and then boom it just just smacks them right it's like this thing feels like a no-brainer that that's the goal here we want to know how to make that no-brainer and that how are we going to do that by making something that really stands out from the crowd at the end of the day think about your affiliate offer you're promoting right now or maybe if you're not an affiliate you're promoting you're selling some item that someone else is obviously selling on the market right so there's so many other affili affiliates out there where sellers we'll just use the affiliate example affiliates out there who are trying to take advantage of what you got or who are trying to take advantage and promote the same thing right so how are you going to stand out from them that's where once again all these things we're talking about today are ways that are going to really help but now on top of that like it, all that's great but then maybe it's like you can even win with this sometimes when other stuff is hurting <laughs> if you have a killer offer but maybe your branding and content your pre has been great if your offer is that killer it's going to take it to that next level. Like I said even before, when I bought my first high ticket product to promote, I bought it from somebody else because at the end of the day, I did think that they were the expert, honestly. But I'll be honest, their branding was okay. Their content was pretty good too, if I'm not lying. They had they had a good package. But at the end of the day, the, the offer is what sold me. How he was going to help me. like that That's really what changed it right there. right? You're competing with others with the same product. you got to find a way to stand out here. It's going to increase your chance for the sale every time if you actually have a killer offer. And really, it's going to be something that, if you ask me, it contains your support. I think, I tell my students all the time too, like, when it comes to making yourself a killer offer, if you're able to offer some true support to them, like support of your own, and especially if you've pre-framed it as you're somebody who can truly help them, you've built up that true rapport, that you're an authority, that you're an expert, you're enthusiastic, and you're willing to put some stake or some skin in the game, maybe you're not putting some skin in the game as if like, hey, if you fail, I'll pay you a thousand bucks. But at the end of the day, you're saying, I'm gonna help you maybe until you get your first sale. I'm gonna help you into this. When you now put that out there, like it's just drastically increasing these chances, right? Because they are believing that you are already someone who can help them. So now, and the product in itself is great, right? It's like, hey, this product is going to be the bomb. This product's going to kill it for you. This product's going to really make it so that it's going to make your life so much easier. And you're going to up your chances at your first 10K month, whatever it may be. But like, forget that for a sec. I'm going to help you make this thing happen too. So I'm telling you, if you start to really incorporate that, it is such a game changer. It is such a game changer. So really, this is something that you're not giving just random PDFs, right? We think about killing a, a crafting a killer offer. 
oh, I got this ebook here, I got this thing here, I got that thing here. And I'm not saying that these things can't work, but I'm just saying in general, to me, like that true support is really what takes it there. And honestly, it's forever evolving because as you grow, maybe you get more results, you get more, maybe you invest in yourself in other places, you're able to sharpen that that much more. And they're able to add more to your arsenal. Right, so that's why it's kind of forever evolving there. If you ask me, it's always getting better. Whatever you're offering here is gonna always get better with time. That That's what my experience, and I guarantee you it's gonna be yours, because once you start doing this stuff, you're gonna realize that, you know what, I helped someone else actually do this little thing on the side here. And now when I talk to, to John over here next time, I'm gonna say, not only can I help you with, that, with this main piece and my main support, whatever, I actually, I got this little extra thing here that, you know what, I just realized this would be awesome for you too, John. And maybe you don't word it like that, but at the end of the day, you listen to what he wants, and now you bring up that point. But that's gonna be another thing I talk about there as well. Um, but really, just you're gonna keep improving as you grow. It's gonna be so powerful there. And really, I wanna talk about premeditating issues and objections. This is something I couldn't even put in the sale in a, in a later on in this presentation. But at the end of the day, I think that a lot of the times people, there's a, a term called like accurate thinking, and just understanding that if there is something that people, let's just say for this example, you're selling a, a high ticket affiliate marketing product, right? And maybe for that product, um, let's just say you're something like me, and maybe you like to sell on the phone, right? Something like that there. Then you get on a call with someone, and they say, oh, I love this, this is awesome. Okay, great, um, it's, you know, it's X price, blah, blah, all right, oh, nice, it sounds great. Um, all right, gotcha. Uh, you know what, I don't really like sales, I don't really jump on the phone call, I still like we're on a call now, like, will I have to do that? Like, I can't tell you how many times I've heard stuff like that, right? So. If I was to just be blind to the fact that some people maybe don't like jumping on the phone, maybe some people just don't like the idea of sales, period, right? Maybe, and once again, this, this is real, real life examples here, like as I'm sure you can resonate with. You have to understand before you get into these conversations and before it gets to that point, you should really start to understand and have a response to these before you get into that situation. Because I'm telling you right now, something like that will happen. Right? Someone says, oh, I don't have enough money for something, right? You, you gotta come prepared with this. Because if you're not, you're gonna get caught off guard and then you're gonna start rambling. <laughs> and once you start rambling, whether it's on the phone or whether it's just through Messenger, you're like, oh no, 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 don't worry about it. This thing is awesome, it's XYZ reasons. Actually, I can work on a little payment plan, blah, 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 blah. It's like, you, know, you answer with sharp answers, right? We wanna be able to, once again, because especially the more you do this, best to test, always practice this stuff. Get yourself in these examples. That's also why cold is good too. In the beginning, like don't matter, doesn't worry if you don't worry if you're dealing with some poor leads, because at least you get to practice and learn more objections that people are gonna have. And then your objection handling is gonna get better, and you can understand ahead of time how, exactly how to respond to these types of questions and uh, questions, objections people may have. Right. So I'm telling you, that is a big thing right there. Don't just hope someone's not going to mention an objection. Right. At the end of the day, if they don't mention, if the person doesn't have an issue with selling, great. That's one less thing I have to fight them on. <laughs> Not fight them on, but persuade them on, right? But so understanding that you just need to really go into something and realize that, hey, there's a chance that they might not like this part about my product. Or like if they want to make money with my product, they might not like this thing about it. They might not like content. They may not want to brand themselves, right? So you have to have an answer to that. Because if you don't and you just start rambling, all of a sudden the expertise is going away, right? Now all of a sudden they're like, ah, it doesn't seem like you really know how to help me. But you can't even solve this, my first question I got for you, right? So you gotta understand that and really help take that thing, uh, take that to the next level there. All right, so now this is a big part. That's why I saved this one for last. At the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, I think this is a place where a lot of people are sleeping on. A lot of people are sleeping because at the end of the day, really, oh, you gotta know that we're, yeah, we might be here on a computer, even right now, right? I'm, I'm looking to a webcam technically, right? So, but at the end of the day here, this thing goes deeper than that. So when you're getting to that sales point, you're getting to that point in the messenger conversation, whatever it may be, understand here, right? That you are talking to a human, right? So we cannot be so robotic in our approach. And that, this is a, something that I feel like took me from, I, I can't even pick a number. Let's just say took me from a seven to a 10, took me from a, an, I say 10 is, I'm always growing, so that's a little, we will be humble. Maybe it took me from a seven to an eight or something like that there. At the end of the day, once you're able to just realize that and genuinely help people, like I said, but also just, it's deeper than that too, as we're gonna talk about here, right? But point blank, messenger, having these sales conversations, if you wanna get a high ticket sale, this has to happen. 
This has to be a part of the process, right? This is truly needed in order to nurture true sales opportunities. You have to be able to get people in Messenger. You have to be able to just have a sales conversation. Once again, back to our um, the original person. You know, we'll, we'll call him Victor, right? Victor said, I'm going to rely on my content and I'm just going to bring people in that way. Now, once again, that's fine. Hey, I mean, as we talked about, I don't think that's 100% fine, but either way, let's say that's, that's your strategy. You're rolling with it. You got to be able to now... Once you get them in, what, do you, what happens then? You have to have a process there, right? That's once again why it comes back to the sales process. If you don't have a process from start to finish, how you plan on closing somebody, you're going to struggle. It's inevitable, <laughs> right? So once again, this whole messenger process here is needed really in order to nurture a true sales opportunity and bring it to life, right? So the mindset side now, I think this is a big thing where you just have to go into a conversation with the right way, you know, get out of your own head, stop thinking whatever negatives you're thinking because you're going to project that on them and it's going to hurt you and they're not going to want to work with you right so also kind of being direct you know i think that it's one thing where you can build rapport start talking with someone but when you're really able to be direct and show that you can help someone once again it's like answering an objection directly like you don't like doing this okay well you know what it's actually not that bad for the a for a reason or no a for a b c reason or maybe maybe just a b reason you're just giving them two quick Fire back responses. This is this is the reason that you can make this thing work. Period. Done. Right? Not not blabbering on. Like I said, these things can really help, and just that mentality throughout the whole conversation can be great. And now, once again, though, I think this is a huge piece. This is what I really meant when I kind of takes you from a seven to an eight. It's like being human. It's a conversation. I think that once again, we're we're so used to looking at a computer, um, and you're just used to maybe someone gave you a script and they said, you know what, like just use this and it's fine. Having a script is, is totally fine and it's it's a good thing to have. But at the end of the day, you gotta be able to be human with your conversations, right? Make someone laugh. I know maybe, whether you're on the phone or in, you're in Messenger, get someone to LOL, like get something, it's gonna break down barriers so, so nicely. Like, and this is something where really you can also show that you're a leader. Like that's one thing too where in Messenger, I really try and try and stress that to anyone I'm talking to as well. And anyone I'm teaching really how to be successful in Messenger. It's deeper than just the text you're putting out. Like so many conversations are different, but the same, just like sales, right? But at the end of the day, you have to, you have to go about it with this mentality while you're in the conversation. That's deeper than whatever you're, whatever questions you're asking, however you're qualifying, it has to be at that level. When you're able to do that, it's gonna really make things that much better for you. And oh, I'm telling you, people are gonna gravitate with you that much more when you can really do this stuff. Cause at the end of the day, so many people, you're, you, you hear the, even that's why when I, when I talk about the word traffic, it's like we say the word traffic, traffic is people, right? So like, let's not get lost in this. Like it's all just a game. It's like at the end of the day, traffic is people. Traffic is, is John. Traffic is Sam. Traffic is Jenny, right? <laughs> Whoever these people are, this is who we're talking to. So let's be legit when we actually go about these conversations, right? And right here, best to test. This is something where in Messenger, once again, that's why it helps in cold to have cold conversations all the time if you can. You're able to test different scripts test different, I'll say test different jokes, test different whatever, you know, test different things that are going to help you move down the line, right? Because at the end of the day, we really got to keep making sure we're getting people from, you know, I kind of like to go off like a straight straight line method, I call it. And others may have heard of this too. But really, you're getting people from the beginning and our goal here is to get them to the close, right? So, but it's not always a straight line right down there. So maybe you're doing a little, you know, it's like you're kind of all over the place. But at the very least, you have to make sure that we're heading towards that close. We're heading towards, the, we're moving down the straight line, heading towards the close. And the best way to, to make sure you're on the way is by testing that. It's like realistically, you want to control what you can control, right? That's a big thing there in sales. So at the end of the day, by understanding that so using something that's worked and that don't, don't feel you got to change something. Everyone's trying to be super creative, innovative, which is good. There's creative space for creativity in this space, which is awesome. But like, if you got something that's working, keep going. Don't feel like you got to reinvent the wheel because at the end of the day, it's going to slow you down. Unless it's to grow. Like, I'm not saying don't switch up anything, but if something's working, don't feel like you have to change it just to change it. Just because you're getting bored of it. Maybe outsource that part if that's the case there, right? But best to test and really dive in with that there. Because consistency with the right framework is going to get results. Like, that's what helped me go from zero to 10K. Like, realistically, you know, like I said, that... After 30 days, 40, 30, 40 days where I was struggling, I still stayed consistent with that framework. I made some slight tweaks, 
but I knew that the overall framework I was working was right. And that's why that follow month, I had my first 15K month, right? And things continue to grow from there because I'm focusing on what works. I'm not getting distracted by too much with what hasn't worked for me. And once again, that's what I'm saying. Once you find something that works for you, hammer it in, hammer it in. I know it can, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable, it's like, that's what's working. You're here to get results. You're here to help people. If you're finding something that's working up, you help people, keep using it there. Don't feel like, ah, you know, I'm going to switch something up here. And once again, I try things out and it's great to test. But at the end of the day, don't lose that core. Don't lose that core there. You know, once you find something that works, really stick with it. You know, and if you want to really get an increased closing rate, get great at qualifying. You know, I definitely, I think that's why, shoot, last month I had a 50% closing rate. And the reason that's happening that much better than, like I said, shoot, <laughs> you remember me before, I said, I was going 10, 15 calls a week. And I closed a couple of hundred dollar sales there, but you know, that's not a high ticket. So realistically, that was a tough time there, right? Terrible closing rate. I can't even tell you what the, I'm afraid to do the math right now, <laughs> but it's single digit closing rate. That's for dang sure. So at the end of the day, if you, the better you get at qualifying, it's going to help you so that now by the time you get on the phone, it's going to help you that much more, especially when you're doing everything we've talked about today. You've pre-framed the situ the conversation, you've pre-framed and showing you're an expert. You, they understand maybe that you've, you've shown some results. You've, you've shown that you've helped others in the past. You're being human. You're doing all this stuff right. And on top of that, you're qualifying them to make sure that they're actually a good fit for what you have, that they're actually even truly interested in what you have. And now I say this, I want to put a little, let's put a little asterisk right here. If you are in the beginning stages, I think that you can overlook this part a bit. If I'm being honest, having those 10 to 15 calls a week, that gave me a ton of practice, right? So at the end of the day, maybe it wasn't, I wasn't getting results from it, but I was testing my butt off with that, right? So now that's able to really, that got me that much more so that there's a reason why the next month I had such a bomb month. You know, it's because I was putting in a ton of work and I was finding out what, what was working, what didn't work. A lot of it felt like it wasn't working, but once again, just sharpening these places that I, I knew needed the most tweaks. That's why I'm so big on the sales process, right? It's like you, you find out where those kinks are in the system, you know, from start to finish. And then my kind of kinks, maybe we're at the, we're on the call, but a little bit before the call, right? Maybe I was doing fine with conversation, things like that, but there was something else missing. So I had to fix those kinks. And once those kinks were fixed, drastic, <laughs> drastic things improved there. So I really want to stress that there. So that, like I said right there, in the beginning, don't worry so, too much about your closing rate. For me, it's more so for you, like let's just see what we can do to keep this thing really moving and just see what we can do to really just get you out there and keep going, 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 staying consistent, talking to people, growing. This is how you're gonna grow the fastest, like point blank period. So that's why I say, how do you do this the most? I, for my first 10K month online, I was big on cold traffic. Like I did not need to solely rely on warm. And that's, I think it's a big reason why I was able to get to my 10K so fast is because I was doing things that maybe made other people feel uncomfortable. But realistically, I'm out here trying to help people. So at the end of the day, if I'm able to do that by reaching more people, it's going to help you that much more there. And knowing how to do it while being human, right? Don't just be out there all spammy and stuff. It's, it's about really connecting with someone at a deeper level and showing that you can help them. Building that true rapport like I talked about, right? So once again, get out there and practice. That is huge right there. Get out there and fail, right? Get out there and mess up. I failed and look at, you know, you see the results now. So at the end of the day, just keep taking that thing that much further. Another big thing here I want to put, detach from the sale, right? I think that this is something that's very hard to do when you're in the beginning, um, but when in doubt, lean out is a good thing that especially now is a lot easier for me to do. If you're starting to get some, some signals, right? Like somebody isn't into what you're promoting, isn't into what you're kind of, they feel like you're qualifying too hard. Um, this can come across in the earlier stages or maybe when you're at the pitch part, right? It's understanding when you need to back off a little bit and when to understand that you're being a little too needy right? Because people can feel this because at the end of the day, be human. What do you think? It's a conversation. They can feel your energy. They can feel that you're being a little pushy at the end, maybe. And once again, it's like, I'm not saying that you can't be direct, but understand maybe at certain situations, it's best to lean out and help yourself. I, I did a live. It must've been like, maybe it was like a three, three weeks, a month ago, something like that, where it was all about, I think it was short road, short, like short term road, long term lane or something. And really understand which people are more so ready to go now and you don't and you can kind of keep going you don't have to lean out because they're interested they're like you know what i'm feeling this like i need something like let's see if what you got can help me then other people as you're qualifying them they're like ah you know what i'm, I'm having a conversation with like 30 other people like 
So yeah, thanks for the tips, um, blah, blah, blah. And now you gotta understand that if you just keep being direct, it's like, no, you need this, you need this. Come on. You know, and once again, I'm just p trying to be a little um, exaggerate there, but at the end of the day, maybe you're not saying I you need this, you need this, but you're saying things that are giving that feeling off. So when in doubt, lean out, plant that seed. Let your content do the work later. You'll get them back in there, right? You'll be able to get them back in there. Follow up, have a follow up sequence. These things are crucial here, right? So less is more. Don't spell, I wanna bring this up here too. Um, don't spell out every plus. Feature versus, versus benefit. So with this here, really what I'm talking about is a lot of the times people, like I said, you wanna ramble on and talk about, oh, all, it has all this pluses, this bonuses. Think about this especially for your pitch, right? Less is more. I like to keep things super high level because at the end of the day, when you start going in too deep, now it's like you're going over stuff that they don't even care about and you're confusing them more. You're confusing them more and more. So now it's like you think you're helping yourself. And that's what I used to do. Even during that month when I was talking about, I was, I was telling them, hey, you get this, 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 right? <laughs> now, once again, now what I focus on, listen to them throughout the conversation, understand what it is that they're actually interested in, where the struggles are. And then you don't have to talk about all the features, which the features are universal to everybody, right? I've talked about that before here. The features are the calls are on Wednesdays. The, the program is exactly 72 days, right? These are features of the program. But the benefit of the program is, maybe to someone who doesn't want to run ads anymore, the benefit is you can do this thing all organically. This is an organic program and it shows you how to do it. Maybe the benefit is for the person, um, they don't like writing email. Oh, look, you don't have to worry about email. You know, we can go ahead and have a different part of your sales process and you can leverage it this way. Oh, I don't want to, oh, um, I don't like, you know, I, I'm not really comfortable putting my face out there, X, Y, Z. All right, you know what the benefit of this program is? You don't have to do that for this reason, right? We bring up these points that they have specifically told us is an issue. And then we harp on it and we let them know, right? So that is huge right there. I want to really make sure that we're nailing, down, nailing in on that there because you're, you're going to hurt yourself so badly <laughs> once you start going too deep into the features. And then by the time, once again, you bring up the price or whatever, they're like, oh my, I don't even know. I'm like, I'm more confused than I am ready to buy. And it's just going to backfire there. So I really want to nail that down there for you guys. Like I said, I know, I know I gave you guys a lot here, but I really wanted to cover this for you so you can have a fully in-depth bit and understand from the beginning, like I said, like think of sales abroad here it's from a broad spectrum. It's not just one reason why you might be hurting with sales or maybe you're having, struggling to get consistency with sales, whatever the case may be. It's just always think of it at a deeper level and look, gets more specific, which, where is it? Where is it that maybe things are getting torn a little bit, right? So like I said, I really hope this helped you guys out a lot here. I wanna make sure I went deep for you guys. If you got any questions, obviously, uh, make for sticking around too. I said, feel free to drop a made it hashtag, made it to the end, whatever you got here. Um, I'm telling you, like hit that like button, that love button if you guys got some value. I want to make sure other people in the group here are seeing this. And oh, and also too, make sure you drop, if you want this, shoot, I'll happy to share you guys with this presentation so you can have all the slides as well. Um, and I'll even share a script with you. So if you want to get access to that, feel free to, we'll, we'll say drop a hashtag sales talk. Keep it on point with this video here. Uh, so feel free to drop the hashtag sales talk and I'll send you guys the script. Uh, I'll send you this presentation as well just so you can have that. Um, but on top of that, let me know if any questions too. I want to make sure that you guys got everything you needed there. So. I'll wait here for another sec, but like I said, uh, while I'm waiting, just make sure that you guys really think about this thing on a deeper level. Like I said, what's what's the why as to why things are going slower maybe? Like, what is it that's really holding things back here? I wanna really see you dive in now and take this into the next level with that. So with that being said, great work you guys over here. Um, I'm not seeing any new questions pop in yet. So like I said, thank you guys for being here. Um, if anything pops up, you know where to find me. <laughs> Keep up the great work, everybody. We'll hey, thanks soon. for watching this video all the way through. Make sure you go ahead and like this if you got a ton of value from which I hope you did. Subscribe to the channel and absolutely go ahead and join us in our original chapters community. Links right down there in the description. And as always, you are designed to become who you choose to be. I'll see you later.